Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms, and today we're going to make a field expedient VHF antenna using a multi tool, some duct tape, some television coax, and a stick. I prefer to transport my duct tape in a uh, with a card, like an old uh, room key card or whatever, or an old credit card. Um, these are a great way to carry duct tape because it's nice and flat. Uh, the plastic burns. You can use it as a uh, source of tinder if you wanted to if you scrape it off small enough. And uh, carries quite a bit of duct tape. We're going to use TV coax. It already has an F connector on it. Uh, the reason why we're using television coax instead of RG58 is, is you know, in a disaster impacted area or whatever, there's plenty of television coax around and there's uh, not a lot of RG58 or uh, RG8 or LMR400 or whatever laying around on the ground. Uh, every house in the world's got this stuff on the side of it and you should be able to cobble enough together. Just ensure that you go to the uh, junction on the side of the house or wherever you're going to scavenge for coaxial cable and just use your multi-tool to uh, remove the section of cable. The multi-tool I use is a Leatherman Wave. Uh, I really like this tool. It's got scissors in it and a saw, which a lot of people think scissors are superfluous, but uh, you'll see that for uh, radio work and everything, the scissors are great for when you have to trim a braid or anything like that. So uh, it's an outstanding tool, and uh, I would encourage everybody to pick one of these up if they don't have one already. If uh, you don't have one, you know, your regular Leatherman tool suffice for our exercise today. One additional item that we're going to use today to interface the radio or the antenna analyzer to the television coax is this uh, BNC male to type F female adapter. Uh, these are great to keep with your radio with your other adapters that uh, you would use to attach your portable two-way radio to an external antenna. Leatherman tool is eight inches when you have it back to back like that. It's four inches per side. This right here, between here and the end, is one inch. Yeah, this thing here doesn't have a ruler on the back side of it like the old ones did. But anyway, so 234 divided by the frequency in megahertz multiplied times 12 would give us around a little over 19 inches at 146 megahertz. So, what we do is one, two for 16, and then three here for 19, right to that point there. And that gives us the length we need to work with. Now using your multi-tool, you're going to go ahead and make an incision down the length of the cable itself, all the way to the end. Just like this here. You're going to want to maintain the outside of the cable if possible because we're going to use that as a part of the antenna when we finish here. Now after we cut the jacket back we're going to go ahead and split it at the very end here and then go ahead and just expose it all the way back along the length of it to our 17 inch mark back here where we have it like that. Your shield, you can push it back a little bit like that right there. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to gather your shield right here and you're going to want to open it up you don't want to cut it because especially with television coax because once you do that you're going to lose a lot of your a lot of the portion of your field expedient antenna so you're going to want to open up at least like a centimeter of shield and then just make a 90 here and push the center conductor and foil all the way back through
takes a little effort sometimes. And now we have this right here. Now what we're going to do is, is we're going to take the shield right here. And just tuck the shield back inside the jacket you just cut. This is going to form your ground plane. Just like that there. Now you're going to take your end here and you're going to remove because this says foil shield. If it didn't have a foil shield on it, if it's just insulation, you can leave the insulation on it. And it's not going to hurt anything, but the foiled shield is going to inhibit the... Um, what it's basically going to do is it's still bonded to the braid itself. So we need to expose the center conductor. So you just make cuts around it. What I usually do is I do it about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter at a time instead of trying to do one fell swoop because you can actually cut into your conductor and put too much tension on it and cause it to break in half so you kind of see what I'm doing here and just like that keep on going all the way back Let's go ahead and fast forward to the end here. So basically what we've done now is we've created a dipole antenna. Uh, we have our, and we're going to turn it into a ground plane. Uh, we have, This is going to be our ground plane, and this is going to be our radiator. And you want to ensure that nothing comes into contact with your radiator that's bonded to your ground plane whatsoever. So make sure you've pushed all your shield back. Now you can see our antenna laid out on the ground makes it a stick there and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to fix it to the stick and make it into a uh, give it some kind of structure and this is our antenna assembled on the structure you can see what I did here I just basically took the stick and taped the element to it and the coax to it and then took the jacket and the shield set it down at close to a 45 degree angle and we just take parachute cord do a clove hitch towards the base and a couple half hitches and then we can go ahead and throw it in the tree you can see our antenna in the tree here camphor tree uh, when you're propelling antenna is a good down and dirty way to do it is, is to use one of your socks throw a rock in it or some sand just tie an overhand knot on it, and that's all you need. Put that thing through the tree. Just make sure it's heavy enough to pull it through on the other side. And here's our antenna, and that is at 146 megahertz. You can see as it drops down, it goes up a little bit. range there Oops. well if you ever find yourself in a situation where you need an antenna and you have next to no resources and uh, it's ugly but it works and like I said which is a little bit of television coax and uh, Applying some basic antenna theory, you can build yourself a working antenna. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.